What's up everyone? I just played a demo of the guitar tone I'm going to be talking about in this video. Uh, I've had a few requests from my tutorials and various other guitar videos uh, about how I get my tone. So I'm going to go over the hardware I'm using, the sort of play style I'm using on the guitar, and then into Ableton, how I process the sound, the effects that I'm using, and that sort of thing. So starting with the guitar, uh, I've currently got, as you may have already seen, a Fender Made in Mexico Player Series Stratocaster with a HSH pickup. I've had this for maybe three or four months. Uh, before this, in some of my older videos, I had a Gretsch G2622, which is also really nice for the lo-fi guitar sound. I didn't really like the playability of it. I prefer the Stratocaster neck. And then before that, I had a vintage modified Squire guitar, so they're quite cheap. Uh, but they still sound pretty good and they're a solid bargain for the price range. So I will link these guitars in the description below uh, and the other hardware I'm going to talk about now. So I'm recording from my guitar into my audio interface, uh, again which I've had two of for my videos. That was the first one I had, it was the Scarlet Solo and it's got a instrument jack in, a mic in, um, headphones, the usual monitoring. But that one broke recently. I tried to solder it, I made it even worse, so it's just an ornament at the moment. And then I got this upgraded 3rd gen 2i2 Scarlet again, uh, and this also got two inputs, so these are dual inputs, so you can put a microphone or an instrument in, and uh, the usual monitor and phantom power and that sort of thing. So I'm going straight from the guitar into those, and then from there I'm playing directly into Ableton, where I'll process the sound, and I'll go over that in a minute. In terms of actual play style, um, usually I'm using the neck pickup or the neck and the middle pickup when I'm playing in the videos and I'll sometimes roll off the tone a bit as well. And the main thing to consider is that usually I'm playing the chords with my fingers which allows for a softer sound and if I'm doing solos again usually it'll be with the fingers and the thumb and I rarely use a pick because I think the sound works a bit better, it's not as harsh and sharp. If you do really fast things, I'll occasionally use the pick for that, but generally it's playing with the fingers. And then it's going straight into Ableton. So I've got my guitar plugged straight into my audio interface, uh, and I'm running that straight into Ableton. And the sound you're going to get initially is something like this. So the sound's very thin, doesn't sound great. Uh, and the main thing we need to do is simulate the amp and the cab that you would have if you were playing uh, through the hardware. So to do this, there's a couple of things you can do. If you're in Ableton, you can use Ableton stock amp and cab. So they sound like this. Which is alright, this is what I used to use when I started my YouTube channel. Um, a previous video I did on recording guitar we're going more in depth on how to use the amp and cab but for this video I'm going to recommend that you don't and that you get one of the uh, one of the dedicated amp softwares such as Amplitube uh, because there is free versions of them uh, so there's Guitar Rig with Native Instruments and Amplitube 4 I think they're on now uh, which has a completely free setup sounds great as soon as you start it up there's no tweaking needed uh, as they've got all sorts of different setups already. So, as you see in the free one, they've got complete rigs for bass, clean, crunchy guitar, um, and then there's collections, game setups, Hendrix, and things like that to get you started. And then it is very much interfaces like an amp on Amplitude, and it's similar on Guitar Rig, so you can change the levels here, uh, tweak it to your liking, and then you can start the effects afterwards. And there's also, you can also add a tuner and stunt box, etc. So after you've got your amp and cab simulation, uh, the next thing I have in my chain is a compressor. So a compressor effectively controls the dynamic range of the sound that you're putting in. So anything that's really quiet will get brought up. Anything that's too loud will get squished down. Uh, and I like to have the compressor with a quick attack and release. And I move the threshold generally so it's just... Mm -hmm. 
just about peaking and just taking the top end off. Like that. And then I go into a saturator. So a saturator uh, effectively applies compression and distortion and the model on uh, tape saturation that was often used uh, in mastering and mixing. Um, but for guitar it gives it a nice slightly distorted sound uh, a little bit more compression and at the moment it's quite minimal but if you wanted more of a distortion you could up the drive and then reduce the output to match so the volume's the same but you get more and the more you do it you get. Sometimes I've run heavy distortion uh, in some of my tracks but usually it's it's subtle. So say around 5 decibels of drive. The next thing I do is throw an auto filter to cut off the top end. Uh, often when recording it gets some high pitched noise uh, I don't really want in the, in the recording so that just rolls that off. And you can also often for chords if I just want some background chords um, that are subtle in the mix I can roll it right down just so the uh, chord is a little bit intrusive a little bit less intrusive for the high end uh, but generally I've just got got it cutting off the top end and then lastly I'll throw on some reverb so in this case I've got quite a heavy reverb on 56 55% on the dry wet knob and a decay of about 3 seconds which is what I'd probably use for my ambient chords when I'm uh, recording a lo-fi track yeah I just I generally go with the dark chord preset because uh, I like the settings, it's got some high cuts um, it's got quite a large size, quality is high uh, you change this to low if you're on like a laptop that's not got very good processor or something like that and it's struggling to handle it uh, but generally I keep that on high uh, I've got quite a large pre-delay and quite a heavy stereo effect on this. Uh, I also note that when I'm generally when I'm mixing guitar I'll have a few different guitar tracks uh, so I'll send them all to one reverb just to make sure it's exactly the same on the settings unless I want some additional effects uh, or some heavy reverb on one of the tracks so it would send to the reverb channel uh, which is better for mixing, it brings the songs together more, it stops the reverbs all clashing and making this, the mix sound muddy. And then finally in Emerson they've got a stock tuner which I usually throw on the end. Uh, so yeah that's it really, uh, I hope it was helpful. I just tried to make a brief summary of what I'm doing, so I had quite a few questions about how I'm recording guitar. Uh, but if there's anything in the video that I didn't go over in enough detail you want me to expand on, please let me know in the comments below and I can work on that in the next video. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.